So I probably should at least record this part. Uh, if you aren't here, then you gotta read all of chapter seven thoroughly. But we're starting out uh, getting to the first lab, which is lab number, what was the lab number? The 16, so probably I got I think I labeled this lab wrong then. Apparently, apparently that's lab 15 and not 13. I need to fix that. There we go. Okay, so that's fixed. Um, okay, so I've logged into the system. Did we copy some files into the home folder? So as I look into this system, I don't have files copied into my home folder of user one. Uh, I do have a CentOS 8 attached apparently. I'm gonna go and eject my, my CentOS 8 installation media. And apparently everybody is at this point where we did not copy some files because apparently they took that part out of the, out of the labs for installing. They may have moved it in to where we where we do snapshotting. Wait, what did that say? Unable to, okay, well, it's all right. Okay, it's ejected now. Cool. Okay, so once that's ejected, um, I can't use this tool to add. For some reason, the that just doesn't work very well. If I go to settings, no, it doesn't work very well. To add a, to actually connect a data store ISO, you, you need to be able to right click on the virtual machine and edit settings here because the remote console has some major limitations on what you can see to add. So I've ejected the CD-ROM out of File Explorer. Now I'm gonna attach a CD-ROM from the NFS library called student files dot or something, class files. Let's go look at what the name of it is. So as I'm coming in here, class files, vsphere.iso. We haven't really done any customization to CentOS 8 other than install it. So having some extra stuff on there and when we clone or deploy from template to see that, hey, the stuff we put on there copies would be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, launch this file or attach it. Oh, I should have clicked connected. Oops, oops. Go back. Can we do something special for the password? The secret. secret, same password as operating systems class. So yeah, I forgot to click connected. Let me make sure that's connected. And then that way it'll actually slide it into the tray. So that's a little tip, trying to add a CD-ROM like that through this menu doesn't work. I've never been able to find the um, NFS library under there. It tries to attach a local ISO on your hard disk of your local machine instead of actually accessing the VMware environment. So having to right click is, is that option. So I'll click on my CD-ROM here and there's a couple of files that appear. And that's one cool thing about the graphical desktop anyway. I don't have to use a command prompt to mount the CD-ROM. It just puts it in there. So the files that we want to copy, uh, some of these files here were created by Dell, like ext part. They were created by Dell EMC because they they deal with SANS. 
And sands, you can dynamically change the size of the lungs and stuff. Remember we simulated one that the last class we formatted at 17 gig and we said, okay, we're gonna pretend the sand added another three gig to it and you could extend it out. Yeah, they did that before VMware was around. So Dell created the utility to expand out like the NTFS uh, file system and Windows machines. So there's some neat little things in there. It looks like there's one that rips out a SID and replaces it in the machine. But what we need here is I don't really need any of the files except for CPU busy that uh, Perl. There's also a, a visual basic script for Windows. These are two files that uh, send the CPU to 100% for later labs where we need to stress test or load, load test our um, servers. And look at how VMware handles virtual machines that are running at 100% utilization. So we definitely need need that, but um, these are Linux machines we got, so we need the Perl script, not the Windows script. Mr. Goodman? No. Just checking Yeah, I see he keeps getting an error. It's just him. We don't care about the crane. Sorry, Sean, you're garbage. <laughs> he can hear me. We'll look at this in a second. I don't know why he keeps getting an error. That's weird. We'll check it out in just a second. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and use my control key. And, and I guess that's the only one we really need, but I'm going to go and copy all these others just so that there's extra files. We've never had to do that in the past. They normally want us to copy IO meter and, and the CPU busy, but the executables are only Windows programs, so they don't really do anything on Linux. But let's go ahead and Highlight everything but the uh, Visual Basic script file. And I'm just going to right click and copy to my home folder. Copy to home. Select. There we go. Or you can just right click, click copy, and then click click home, and then right click, click paste, like you're doing however you want to move them. Just so that whenever you're done copying them, they're out there like that. And the main purpose of that, like I said, when we're doing clones and stuff, that uh, when we clone, we'll see that these files are also in the clone. Because anything else is just standard, straight up CentOS 8 default folders and stuff. And we wouldn't really see. So they're just, just adding some junk there. I showed it. Which file? The class files, ISO. So let's check out what what is not allowed. So show me what you're trying to do, Sean. Let's go into edit settings. Okay, it's failing because he hasn't ejected the CD yet inside of Linux. Otherwise, I want to have the, the checkbox there if he ejected it. That seems to be the problem. We'll, we'll see. You can't, no, no, don't eject it there. Eject it from the file explorer or from the command prompt. You can't just type eject. That's taken a while. Although, well, there it is. Now you just click the eject button. That's why it was failing. <clears throat> Linux was telling the, the other Linux system, no, because VMware is Linux. That's just those temporary power settings. Okay, I, I think you're good now because there's no longer a checkbox beside it. So 
Now go back to your, not that setting, go back to your other settings and it should work. You have critical, um, yeah, we don't care about warnings. Critical power warnings, they're, they're fine. What's that? And they're like a little dog that's sitting somewhere and everything's on fire and he's like, this is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hit the little checkbox. Yeah. That's weird. Interesting. That's what I was going to tell them to do next is just shut the virtual machine down. I would have just done a power off and then changed it up. Yeah, it's that Windows 98 machine that's causing the problem. Integrating its tentacles. The German tacked it and made his made his Linux VM not not be good. Is it showing the password supposed to be secret? Should be secret. All oh, lowercase. Although you created something called Paul, I don't know. What did you use? Pass one, two, three, four, maybe? Yeah, we were told to use secret our uh, root account was supposed to be pass one, two, three, four. If that doesn't work, you can probably cancel out and log into root and then change the password to Paul. Wait, did you log in as Paul? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go and eject my CD-ROM and after I've got the files copied, and once I ejected the CD-ROM, I'm also going to go edit my virtual machine and change this over to a different type of device. Maybe it's no longer connected, but uh, I want to change it to a client device and hit OK so there's no disk attached. Things work better if there's no CD-ROM attached. Even in Hyper-V, you now Paul couldn't start his uh, VMware class Hyper-V machine because the CD-ROM ISO image was no longer located on the drive. So having a CD attached where the CDs can no longer be there, moving it from one host to another can cause some issues and complaints. Sometimes it's built in to check and say, I don't like that you've got a CD in there and I'm not gonna do anything because you've got a CD in there even if it is accessible. So I always like to take the CD out and change it to a client device when not in use. <clears throat> and that will solve a lot of problems. It's, it's more than just ejecting the disk. I went in and changed it from data store device to a client device, which completely eliminates the CD-ROM as, as a problem. So again, if you missed that step, once I've ejected inside of Linux, I had to edit. Yeah, I had to edit the settings, and I had to expand out the CD-ROM, and I changed it from data store to client device, and it's no longer connected. Hitting OK. You're still broke, Sean. Yep. Hold 
Charlie, you know how to fix it. What's well, happening, dude? Slow. I know you're slow, but you know I know you can fix it. I don't know. I don't. He's not that smart. Look, Sean. Sean has not been doing computers for very long. <laughs> no. I think that's a lie. Why is it a black screen? It's been stuck at that. I'm concerned with uh, James over here. He hasn't done anything. Interesting. <laughs> Wake up. He just goes, no. <laughs> James, I fool you. Your partner says you're not doing anything. He's worried about you. Worried if you're alive or not. Somebody coming. What are you trying to do? To get to the client device? Or you're trying to get the CD in the, in the first place? It wasn't marked as connected. Okay, so I just shut it all the way down. Then I finally told it to shut down Guest OS the second time, and it finally shut down. There is a power off option somewhere that you can click too. What were you doing to make it not want to shut down? Spent too many hours in that game. Sean, when it when we started, it said, ha ha, hack by the Germans and all. So like, I will. Yep, that is what it said right there. Hack by Germans. <laughs> you suck, garbage. Okay, it, it's going to boot back up. You should be able to copy the files and maybe eject the CD ROM. I don't know. We'll reboot sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's all written in German and you can't. It plays a sound. It's just. I have a friend that went to Germany. Maybe he can read the German. I went to Germany. I conquered them. I conquered Germany. He said in Germany, though, he's like, everybody drinks beer. He says, you go get on a train somewhere, and if you don't have a beer in your hand, so people like see it, and they'll, follow, they'll come up to you. He's like, you need a beer? I'm like, why do you not have a beer to drink? He yeah, said, it was pretty cool. He says, everybody was just mildly buzzed. Nobody was an alcoholic, but they just. It's a really nice know, place. Mildly stay buzzed the whole time. It's very mellow. When I went, uh, we were walking down the street. Some dude just stripped naked. We ran down the street. Uh, he had a little bit too much beer. <laughs> yeah, it's e it's either like it's either they're drinking beer or they're smoking cigarettes or they're doing both. It's one of the two. Like a lot of uh, everybody there smokes cigarettes. Okay, but yeah, but it's break time. Maybe his internet died or something. I don't know. Or he probably fell asleep. He's still in Zoom, though. Yeah, he's, but that doesn't mean he didn't fall asleep. I'm sure if you kick him, he would freak out, try to reconnect. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know <laughs> The best thing. I'm sure it's a great day. Well, that's where you're all Yes. Do we have any stories? Yes, do we have any stories? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
also we were right to point. Yeah, that was weird. And then when it does like do this, it'll open like three at a time or whatever. I'm wondering, like, we're huh, interesting. Bring up your task manager, see what's going on, see what the processor and stuff's doing. Just click more details. And... So, Malware Bytes is in the system. That's one thing that needs to be uninstalled. CPU is only 4%, 19% memory. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd right click the start menu and go to go to add or move programs or programs and features. That's what they call it now. I'm from the 90s. So, yep, uninstall malware bytes and McAfee Safe Connect needs to be uninstalled. Um, no, not yet. Uh, there's a 7-zip Adobe Reader Flash. Uh, yeah, uninstall the McAfee. Hang on, I'll show Mr. Goodham. It is, it is professional. Microsoft. I, I did not. I swear to God. I'm That's cool. Is that, is that an acceptable <laughs> business? Uniform? Aaron, I think I saw you respond. And I was like, yeah, that's what I meant. And yeah, it's like, a white shirt. That's white shirt's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Uh, I, I meant to say. I broke it in. Go check. Um, Go check your little cog wheel and check Windows yeah. updates to see if Windows updates is doing something. Oh, check out it. Doing the rest of the machine. I wanted to, because, you know, since you want to respond with text messages, I was going to come. Working in the environment last Friday. Yes or no? I work. Yeah, so apparently you probably need to just go ahead and restart. So we'll get a little bit of a call you. Number one rule with GPO don't remove the administrator. Yeah, it wasn't fun. Oh, um, workstation five, maybe the one where Bethany normally sits in one of four. Apparently, according to her, it keeps having memory issues. So, what the actual computer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know. Well, they got new computers for that room too. Oh, okay. So, but I don't know when they'll be installed. Probably over the summer. So she just screwed and going to fail. And not graduate. She moved for years. <laughs> no, she's got to use that one computer and fail. We can't have Bethany passing. Yeah, I'm going to take it out of here. 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 All that he asks is. Haley, are you going to be in the gym yeah. at four o'clock today? Yes. So is Jared. We have a concert today. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? Oh, yeah. I got it. <laughs> it's not going to be good. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you guys in a band? Yeah. <laughs> like, what kind of band do you play? Like a rock band? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, what? Like a symphonic Dude, what? You're one of those mm -hmm. harmony bands? Oh my god. Symphonic gosh, band. No, they're they're not like um they're not like uh, uh 
What do they call it? Dude, that'd be funny if Jerry just busted out with a really beautiful voice. <laughs> oh, I don't know that. Maybe he's, oh, he's our only trombone player. Yeah, what are those movies? There's like three movies of the. <laughs> the Bellas. What movie are the Bellas in? Pitch Perfect. Pitch Perfect, yeah. <laughs> no, they're, they're not a Pitch Perfect band. Jack Black is like one of the most surprisingly talented people ever. It's an awesome dude. Yeah, man, you're like, yeah. Oh, this guy's useless. And he still is. He's still and useless. He did an interview and someone was like, So, like, did you ever try to like use your voice for like serious things? Like, yeah, we tried. It was, it was stupid. And uh, they're like, So, we can't make sure you can that. That's awesome. Have you, have you heard the clean version of all Yes. They're awful. Awful. <laughs> Especially, like, literally, Diesel Walk. That whole song is just nothing about what's in the song. It's just, it's, it's just the riff. That's all it is. What about you? I think Trivi would be better than probably would be. Yeah. It's pretty solid. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Listen to uh, a favorite version of the version and it was just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Great Eric's nice G song. You could not play like, him. <laughs> See, like, rap songs can get away because they're, they're going so fast, yeah. you don't even realize it. But, like, Tenacious D. <laughs> They did a <laughs> the where they did like a tour and they had they get all dressed up. They get they're like electric guitar. So That's a Lord Terran Mannix question. I, I think and then the I read his question and sneezed at it. Yeah. It's the class files ISO. And like they hit the hell. And they the child they make sure they say it's the reason to and like the devil comes in, he was like, hey, you did the best pop dance with your right hand. And then they went to Dave's because they couldn't be Dave's class in two years. I don't like the Jack Black as a YouTube channel now. Okay, so I've got a recording of, of their band. Y'all yeah, want to hear their band? Cal is going to be on our Probably the worst moment in their lives. Like a divorce could not be worse. So our classics for eight. I hope so. Four o'clock. Yeah, I think twenty bucks for me. Just turn back my game. Miss Yo. Everybody else stop. Let us play. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone. We don't know where he went. Hey, we'd be in the mafia. 
clean yeah, over there. Yeah, he disappeared, right? Yeah. He was there and then he He's like, well, I don't know where he went. <laughs> Hey, did you hear about the Arkansas uh, robotic turn up in Arkansas? That's crazy. <laughs> Which time came up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, he has robot in a rug that was like in the guidance council. Really <laughs> no, it's just walking. Hey, Mr. Gooden, you see my rug? No. Mr. Gooden paid off. That's great. I can just see my. Uh... Am I the only one that plays with bowling here? <laughs> Wish I'd be that cool, dude. Wish I'd get like the um, stop. Wish I could do that. <laughs> that movie would be like the Jesus Christ of the Yeah. yeah like the United States. It would just be a smack in the head. That'd be real. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen the new show? Have you seen Sean Legacy? The guy who plays with the last game, you know, me and Sean, my boys have been being. Wait, Sean? What did you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a part of the movie where he's like, Boy, am I supposed to create the perfect system? And the way he says, yeah, is so funny. <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's, it's so, like, every time we all hang out, we're like, Boy, am I supposed to create the perfect system? You hear five people. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time. So stupid. It's how I know here. If I ever hear that, I'm afraid they cry. What the heck's going on with your system, Jeremiah? Why are you even on that? What did you do? Why are you in the plants manager page? Really? Yeah, it's been three years. Huh. Yeah, it's like been a slide for five years. Huh. Yeah. So do you, you play a uh, guitar or bass? Plus, we don't. No, I don't I can play bass. But, uh, the VC9? I can't play bass. That's not what I'm going to But you're on the appliance like, management uh, interface uh, page. Like, I kind of just like. Just hit enter. It's hard See what's to going on. Like, yeah, I don't know what that other page is doing. Like, so like, <laughs> just hit the checkbox like, down there, Jeremiah. Like, Y'all integrated stuff. It was like I was garbage like three years. And I was like, after the narrow was. Can you read music? No. I'm sure we're off starting. And you're each tab. This is like three to eight. No, because my music teacher didn't tell me. Wow. And I never thought about the band. I was going to say, you could like play for churches. I did play for church. Really? Yeah, it was awful. So do you like listen to the gear in and stuff? Yeah, or That's my. That's real talent. Like. Or my, uh, I did that. And like my, uh, <laughs> my the leader of the band said, like, these are the chords of the like, <laughs> war. And I'm 16, I'm playing four years. Come, come. <laughs> I actually did it to get better chords. And they actually worked. Yeah, look at that. Like, look at the garbage, dude. Like, like, the only thing to think about this is our drummer who left the college and they were like, like, <laughs> we're still be playing and the dude did a full day off. He's like, yes. I'm like, five what am I, what am I putting in the search right. for again? Okay, what now? What do I What do I put in the search bar again to get to my uh be fair because I can't get into it. Oh uh, you're a what group are you in? Uh group six. It's like BC six? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah it's you put go to bc six dot isn't it? Yeah it doesn't are you inside your virtual machine? No okay yeah it's crap yeah Okay, that's my fault. I just never realized. Never mind. Does somebody have a question in the other room? No. Okay.
And that was a lot faster. It didn't take five minutes to see your screen. So maybe you'll be able to do something when it finishes. YouTube's going to have a lot of stuff on it. All the break time was on YouTube. I will be. That's fine. It's in the morning, so. But if I pause recording, then nothing will get recorded because I'll forget to start it again. You upload it anyway. So far, it's going to have to listen to this one. Yeah. <laughs> Probably some of you may have seen some of those. If you watched any of the YouTubes, there's not that many viewers, though, so probably not. Blame them and Sean. I thought you were his friend. Oh, I am. I just, you know, that's the uh, the tough friend sometimes. The tough friend. Yeah. Okay. It might work. It's trying to work. Yay, logged in. OK, so. We got those files copied into the home folder. And then we deattached the VS the, the 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 class files ISO. Yeah. So now I think we can look at actually what do they want us to do in the lab? Lab 16, I think it was. Lab 16 is on page 53. So 
83. Lab 16, using VMs and templates, creating templates and deploying VMs. Okay, so this lab, we got, we're going to create a virtual machine template, create customization specs, and deploy virtual machines from a template. All right, so let's look at what needs to be done here. Blah, 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 drop downs. VM and templates, convert a Python thing to a template. What do we want to convert? Oh, we want to convert. Um, it's an icon, blah, blah, move Python. To the, Okay, so notepad. So this is lab 16 for us. And basically, what you want to do is basically shut down Finos 8. So that's basically task one is you're shutting down your CentOS machine, convert it to a template and you move it to the templates folder. So you kind of read through kind of what the, they said to do for um, the steps. And you don't have a photon or whatever, but you have your CentOS 8 machine, you can easily right click, convert it over to template and you can move it We have to rename. Yeah. Let's do, yeah, that'll work. So yeah, that's what they want you to do for task one. It means you use the power off command from the command prompt or you go click the little power button to to shut down inside of CentOS 8. You don't, you don't do a hard power off. That's not a safe shutdown. Use the operating system's mechanism for shutting down. I'm going to go shut down mine. I disconnected it. You don't want to right click and power off. That is not a safe shutdown. You'll have to power back on and then safely shut it down. You could have file system not marked clean. Power off is like pulling the power cord that is not safely shutting down. Unless you do a 
put that link inside of the operating system. So that was what task one wanted you to do. You beat Sean. So at the end of task one, once you've uh, shut down your CentOS 8 machine, converted it to a template, and then dragged it into the labs VM, uh, labs templates folder from the VMs and templates icon, because that's the only place you can see labs VM folder very easily, uh, then that means you have completed task one. The icon out beside the virtual machines will also change to a piece of paper with a little corner flipped up. Task two wants us to create some guest customization wizards. Um, task two. Yeah, so you create a, get a customization uh, spec under policy something. Um, name the, the spec. Um, last name spec like that right there. And then let's see what they want us to do. So they want to go to policies. And new customization. Of course, I gave you what to name it. Uh, so you're going to name it. Uh, selecting Linux is right. You're doing um, main csnt.edu, not vsphere.class. Use our time zone, not Pacific time. Good. 
DNS is in 10. This, yeah, it's a semi virtual machine. Uh, Ethernet. 10, 10, 1, 10. Okay. You should have been able to look up that. 10, 10, 1, 10. And of course, the DNS is already told for you up there. Now, of course, semester people, you actually be able to critically think that, that if your DNS is csnt.edu, then it's also csnt.edu and other spots where it's asking for your DNS domain name. <clears throat> so task two specs, you can pretty much go through it, but what you need to know is you're, you're using your last name dash spec as the name for it. The domain name used when you get to that uh, point is csnt.edu. Use our own time zone. And there's our DNS IP address when you're creating the specification wizard. How about I complain about the KB in lowercase? For the target, the target, uh, yeah, so we do Linux OS, right? Yep. So customization spec, I mean, They kind of need you to like not try to do these things one step at a time, but like read the whole thing and figure out, you know, what is the purpose of this? What do I need to do? I've got a Linux machine. I'm in this class with csnt.edu. I've got this DNS and you should be able to just go do it without trying to go step by step. Good, man. I'm trying to shut down my Cento at our state still, but let's see. It looks like you've logged into the management interface. Yeah, of I know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get to the right one, but my computer's being. Yeah, that's the right uh, one. There's hit enter and it'll go. You're straight out and go faster, Haley. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create my custom spec. So yeah, custom spec was just under the menu and policies and profiles, creating a creating a custom spec. I see see the other people so I'd like Goodman spec that sounds good So using using Linux, we're attacking Mr. Potato Head, not McGuire Rogers. That was an initials. At least I can use that as an excuse. He forgot the middle name. What? 
Uh, no, they still have Mr. They just made the Mr. Smaller. They're still printing it on the box. It just not as pronounced. So yeah, um, it's probably best to use the virtual machine name typically when you're cloning because I always like when my server name actually matches what it shows up in the in the virtual machine list. It's a whole lot easier if we're in a production environment if those two match up. So using the virtual machine name as what the actual computer name is going to be that the clients are going to use to, to access the guest operating system. So here we got a uh, domain name. Well, that was our csnt.education. And then the time zone. We're not in Africa. We're in the United States. Central. So selecting the correct time zone shouldn't have been too difficult for you. And do we need any? What's the difference between the US, Central, and America, Chicago? The words? The lack of both. Because actually, probably. I don't know. That should work. Yeah. America Chicago's might be better. A lot of Linux distributions use city names instead of actual time zones. I don't, either one should work. I'm going to go the simple route and go US Central. So you can even include custom scripts to run junk if you want to, or you don't need to do any extra script. Networking, what does it say on the networking? It says use standard settings. That's normally probably pretty good. And DNS settings, we were what, 10, 10, 1, 10. And the search path was the csmt.edu. So all of that will automatically be applied if we use it when we do a clone or if we do a, do a clone from a template, we can use this custom spec and not have to answer any of those questions. And hopefully that wasn't too terribly complicated to know what customization spec, once you actually look at it and go through it, you know, it's, that's where you should be at is you should be able to like read the entire task and like, what is this wanting me to do? What is the purpose of it? And then be able to figure out how to apply it to my situation right now. Oh, then that moves on to what is task three's purpose? I think it's actually create a virtual machine using the spec file. Well, let's look at that. Um, Let's read through all of task three. So it wants us to go to the VMs and templates, find our template, and it wants us to deploy the, temp, the, uh, the virtual machine. And it wants us to give a name, Photon 11. Well, our situation is we can't all create Photon 11. What have we been doing? We've been using our last name, right? So we've been using our last name and, and our our very first one was named, well, let's go look at it. Let's see, what do we need to name Name the new machine? So we used our, our name with our group number, and then that group number is going to come important when we combine groups later on. But uh, And then we followed it by like zero, 01. OK, well, this will be creating a second virtual machine. So like when you get to that point, and you're creating a virtual machine, and we've been using things like last name, group number, dash 01, well, you would hopefully think about, I'm just gonna use my last name, my group number 02, because it's the second virtual machine I'm deploying into the system. So task three, uh, we're doing a new 
DM from your templates. Name is last name number zero two. And of course, that would be pound is equal to group number. So let's look at what else in task three that it's wanting us to do before that we, and then that way you don't need to actually, once you get the, the gist of the whole thing, you should be able to just go do it without, without going through the steps. And that's how you do learn better. If you try to lead, read line by line, you normally don't absorb what you're supposed to be accomplishing. So read the whole thing first when you should have told all this like a hardware software class. It's like, if you're doing a lab, read the whole lab before you tear off into it or Cisco one or whatever. So creating a new uh, new virtual machine from your template. We're going to name it last name group number 02. We're going to put it in the labs VM folder. So that looks, looks legit. We're going to select a compute resource. You only have one compute resource, it's your ESXi host. So that shouldn't be a problem. We're gonna come down here to data store, select your data store. Well, we don't have an iSCSI data store, but we've got three of them really. Or share one, share two, and share three. So speed wise, we can data store location. So we can spread this out. Um, one through three does, uh, one, two, three, we'll just do share, share a one and then groups, you know, four through, through six can use share O2. And then of course, group seven, seven through nine, can do share 03. That'll spread the workload across three different NASs and should make the deployment faster. If everybody picks share one and we had 19 templates trying to be deployed at one time on one data store, it would overburden that thing, throw a fit and start crying. <clears throat> the network card would anyway. And the hard drive's like, yeah, I'm okay, but the network would be our bottleneck. So we'll spread that out. So it's, um, I'll make sure you can see this in a little bit, but let's continue reading. Like I said, we wanna do the whole, read the whole thing before we start. Uh, thin provisioning, pretty much always wanna make sure you do thin provisioning. So that's good. Uh, select a customization spec and power on the virtual machine after creating. Sounds pretty good. It says select photon custom spec. Do we have that? No, you created your own custom spec, so use yours. It wants us to create two of them. It wants us to do this twice. So guess what we're going to do on the on the second one? Okay. It's going to be three. So we're going to do the exact same thing on both of them. It's just the only thing you're going to change between the two steps is you can't name them the same. So the first one's going to be two. The next one's going to be the third virtual machine you've ever created in your in your life. 
Okay, you may have done other virtual machines in your life. But that would be your process. So the key changes for task three is the name of the virtual machine and which data store to, to put the virtual machines on. So you probably don't even need to really read. You can have the instructions up. You may need to, to glance at them, but. Mr. Dean. Yes. When I'm restarting. I mean, when shutting, shutting down, down the CentOS 8, 8, 8, is my whole, is my whole um, virtual, virtual machine VM class supposed to shut down or? Yeah, so, yeah, if you powered it off, then that shut down. So you just close that tab out if you shut okay. it down. No, not, not Windows. Don't shut down Windows. It looks like you already shut it down. I don't see anything on your. Um, your virtual machine, so you just close the, the, the uh, Chrome tab out. Yeah, it looks like it's still running. Um, we normally don't ever use that web interface. We always right click on the virtual machine and connect to it with the, with the um, remote console. The web console is not, not the picture, the virtual machine name on the left side. Right click on it. You got to open with remote console. That's normally how you control it. Just tell to skip this version. I should probably really download a new version of it, but we don't need it. Okay, it looks like, I don't know, it's maybe screensavers on, click in there and just lock up or what's going on. I'll take control for a second and see if I can click and figure out if your systems. System acts like it's locked up. I'll restart the guest. Let's see what's going on with it. Uh, it seems like something that is locked, locked up for something. Seems to be booting now. Yep. Now you can control it.
I see it 37 percent. So if you got the cloning going on, and see the group two's got each one of theirs cloning. So it's probably a good time to take a break. We'll probably take anywhere from since y'all are doing four at a time, probably four to eight minutes for it to clone across, possibly longer since you've got two more groups also doing four machines, maybe at the same time to the same data center. That's quite a bit of work. Each uh, each data, not data center, each data store up there, share one to share threes, potential of having 12 virtual machines trying to be created at the same time. So that will, cause some slowdowns. Share three is probably be the fastest one since it's got five NIC cards in it. Do I need to sign in to sample user one to do the shutdown? I think so. You might, there's, there's a power button up there at the top. Yeah, there is a power button up there at the top. You might be able to click it. And, See if it's got the option. Yeah, and then you click the power button again. Should give you the ability to, to power off. Yep. Now I can do the other steps. So yeah, while this is copying the cross, that's a good time for taking a break and I don't think I'm going to clone mine. If I have to destroy anything. I'll just destroy my wires. Sounds good to me.
Hey, Mr. Goodman.
Here it's not nice to go to. <laughs> Some people is here. I know that. You get to meet the bigger person. <laughs> Take the ball right there. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Okay, so are they still cloning? Mr. Goodman? Yes. For the, because I'm on test two still, for the administrator password, you just put the pass one, two, three, four, or you just leave it blank. New VM customization. Go back. You shouldn't even be getting that. Keep going back. And back again. All the way up to number one, I guess. Did you not pick Linux? You're still like, yeah, it's gotta go all the way back to number one. Okay, so on that page, I full the scroll down. Did you pick Linux? Oh, I didn't I didn't realize I didn't see the scroll down. Yet. There you go. Now okay. if you go next, it'll I'll have the right. You gotta put the domain name in there and csnt.edu. And then you'll have to scroll up and make sure you got the, you made a change there. You're supposed to have that top radio button clicked, use the virtual machine name. There you go. And you can set the time zone and How's he gonna bless the rings? So has any group, uh, somebody got their clones finished yet? Matthew said something. Cool, so all of yours got, which, uh, you want to share two? Yeah, it's a little bit sore. The first time I've had a full class in six, 
seven years or something like that, maybe it seems like. Well, even back then we didn't even have all nine servers. We have maybe maxed out at like 14 students. So I don't know if I've ever had a class of 18, maybe once. I don't actually have HMS 17, but. And these Linux machines are smaller than a Windows Server install would have been. So that's kind of why I picked Linux. To speed some things along. So while that's going, I need to check to see if Bethany hasn't just totally destroyed that one hard drive. The uh, share one. It's probably why it's going slow. She probably screwed it up. But it's, it's also her group. I think Haley was laughing at that. So, Haha, somebody else is being picked on. Forgot to click play. What version of Google Chrome am I running? Running Google Chrome version 24. Yes. That has no internet. So I don't care about trying to get anything in there to update it because it still works accessing these pages. So, Mr. Gumby, what's the, uh, I typed out the, what the name's supposed to be, but I mistyped it, so. In the notebook. It's supposed to be the last name. I'm not even sure. Okay, you have to scroll to the left. What is it doing? What is it asking? Suck the. Away from the template virtual machine name. Okay, so so that's asking your last name, group number, and is this your first one you're deploying? Yes. Yeah, that's just your. Uh, that's where you're using your last name, group number, and O two. Okay. Or O three for your. Second one that you create.
like that. That's just what the name is. Take the A out and just replace the A with a dash. Yeah, that should be it. All right. Okay, so that drive is still still hasn't died. Just got a warning. Kind of wait till it, they completely die before I replace them. That one's all still good. So these two drives are mirrored together, I think, and then striped. Yeah, raid one first. So those are mirrored, those are mirrored, and those are striped across. So as long as drives one and two don't go bad, we're good. Drive one goes bad, and, and one of drive three or four go bad, we're still good. Well, it looks like 46. It looks like probably one of the newer drives. And 41 looks like one of the older drives. Interesting. Group two is just holding everybody up. Sorry. Share 03. Show me smart information. So possibly the drives don't have smart capabilities. Oh well, I just hope everything's still good.
need a webcam in there so I can look the lights on it and see if they're green or amber. Oh, look at that. Look at that. They finished. Is anybody else still copying or creating? Yeah. I'm on my third one. Okay. So after doing or doing these labs, it's templates are I think kind of cool. It took a little while because well, we just had a whole bunch of people deploying machines at the same time. And and we only got one gig cards going to the to the NASs for deploying out there. It's kind of a bottleneck and and they're platter disks, they're not SSDs, they are raid grade 10, so that helps speed things up. But, but for lab purposes, you're, you're not messing with a million dollar rack worth of equipment and expecting it to be super fast. You're just learning the, the concepts. So those virtual machines there are read only. And then we got the other two virtual machines. I don't know if I wanted you to look at, look at the stuff, but I'll, uh, I want to look at the actual templates here. So if I look at my template that I have, and see works. It's my backing on it. Connected to share one. Okay, so, so if I go look at my share one and the files, what did it do? So a machine that's a template, there's fewer files here in the list. Some of the stuff that's missing, I don't see a two gig B swap file here because that matches the amount of RAM or four gig or however much RAM I assigned to it. So there's less space. And these other files are pretty much the same except for the configuration file. The VMX file is no longer a VMX file. It is a VMTX stands for virtual machine template configuration file. So not really anything changed when I converted to template, it just had to rename the, the file extension and make sure the VSwap wasn't there and that was all cleaned out. So that T right there is just indicating, hey, this can't be started. The VMDK files and stuff should be locked. So. And that's why it's really easy to convert back to a, to a virtual machine and make changes. You just tell it to convert back and all it has to do is rename the file and then, then it can start again. Create the vSwap for the RAM and install patches and you can shut it back down. So I do like templates and yeah, it took a little bit of time to deploy, but if you go look at your running machines that you deployed, You'll notice that it's powering on. When doing the third one, do I just do the same step with the first template? 
Yep, except just the name's different. Okay. So this is still powering up. Again, these NASs now have 12 virtual machines trying to run off of them at the same time. And three different servers. And this is why people like 10 gig ethernet and SSDs. So Matthew York, what, what speed networking do y'all have at your company? You don't know. Okay. Of course, there'll be different speeds. You'll have one to probably go to the NASs and stuff to the SANs that are maybe fiber channel or I don't know what they would use. So uh, it's finally booted up. And as I log in, a couple of things we'll look at. So I didn't have to go through the installation wizard of CentOS 8. We did that at the very beginning. So all of the stuff that we, we installed, selecting server as a GUI and selecting developer tools and, and uh, guest, uh, guest tools and stuff, which would be the VMware tools, that's all already included. And as I open it up, I noticed that the, the server name, the customization spec did work because now I'm Rogers 2-02 right here on this machine. So that's where that custom spec, I didn't have to do the install and say, this is my computer name, blah, blah. All we did was click, use this custom spec and it asked us some simple things like, what do you want the virtual machine to be named and where do you want it to put it? And the custom spec answered all the other questions. If I do an LS, then I see that there's the BG info, the IO meter, and it looks like I don't see the main file that we really needed. You missed the CPU busy .pl. So that's the main file that we need. The others are Windows. We just had there for, for looks, but one file will probably, I don't know, we'll see if we need it when we get there. You can hold off till we get to that point. So yes, the applications we installed, we'll pretend those executables were applications we installed. They're automatically there and in the right spot. So yes, templates are cool. You only install the OS once, then you just deploy from template from then on. That's what I wanted to do. So templates and clones, we just did templates. Is there a lab on cloning? Apparently not. Cloning is just almost exactly the same process, but you're running off of a either running or powered off virtual machine instead of a template. And you'd use the same customization spec and stuff off of it. So there's not really anything different other than what you right click on and the downfall of running a, a clone virtual machine.
the differences that are happening, the log files and stuff are changing continuously in Linux. You know the slash bar log directory, any uh, any maybe corrupt print jobs if it's a print server might might get hung up. So if you're cloning off a system, you don't know what's happening at that point in time. What changes that you might be moving over to a new system and looking at the the running virtual machines that you could clone from the yeah, you've got there they take up more space there's the vswap file two gig in size because it's running it's got to have a place to swap the entire machine out if the physical server starts running out of ram uh, you have some lock files in here that take up space Some other type of file that's taken up some junk that that you wouldn't normally have if you had it shut down and as a template. We got to pick on Sean one more time. So, cloning one of his machines instead of pulling from a template. How do you know that a German hacker's not in there? Change your name to K-pop. Censorship. <laughs> Do you have any questions over templates and clones? You think you could set one up on your own if you had a business scenario you needed to? So that's one of the really cool features of virtualization is be able to have those. You know, whenever you go to Azure, we went to Azure and we deployed out a CentOS machine. Remember that? That's what they had. They, they were using Hyper-V, maybe. They may have used VMware, I don't know, but they had, they had a web interface built on front of it and they just cloned. If you go to Amazon Web Services and stuff and, and buy virtual machines or rack space or whatever and tell it to deploy, you're just connecting to a, to an interface and uh, they're deploying out a clone virtual machine for you. And it'll start up with your name and IP address or whatever. So that's what's happening. The lesson two here, working with content libraries, this is really more of what that uh, Amazon Web Services or Rackspace or whatever, when you go to the web interface, they are probably using content libraries and they built their own API web interface in front of it. So it's branded for them. And uh, it's basically taking templates and clones and putting it into a, a published library somewhere that can be accessed through through web links and shared uh, throughout a worldwide company is all the content libraries are. So it's kind of a clearinghouse or web interface that um, yes, you could build your own kind of like app store on top of it and have make stuff pretty. So here's content libraries. They are not, they're, they're a little bit more than just a template. They are actually converted over into OVA or OVF files. So all of those separate files could possibly be compressed into to an OVA format, so the configuration file and, and everything's in a single file. And then that can be replicated and synchronized into, into storage areas globally. And then you could provide, like I said, web links for people to deploy from a content library. They can go search or shop for virtual machines that have been pre-configured by a smart person somewhere in Libya because they're smarter than us over here. And, and then you could deploy awesome machines configured. So that's content libraries. So just to, just maybe a little bit better interface for sharing almost the same concept of our templates and stuff, but they are typically um, rounded up into a single file and then, then replicated 
the different content library uh, systems. So they can be synced across sites, vCenter server instances. You can share ISO images, so you can mount ISOs that are stored into a content library instead of having to go browse and find the data store name and then open the data store name and find the folder and then find the ISO image. They can be um, just displayed a little bit differently, maybe easier to find and search using the, uh, the content library. So that's its purpose. So you start with local, local stuff, then you publish it and they sync to the different uh, content library points that you have across the globe. And then people can subscribe and they can get alerts and stuff and, and search what's being published in the content library. How do you add stuff? Well, you can clone or basically you, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a way to convert to a content library because it's gotta be put into an OVA or OVF format. So it's not really just converting it to a read-only virtual machine. It's, it's compressing it up and putting it into a single file or, or a set of files for easier portability. But as far as the how to do it, right click and you can clone a running machine or a, a template into a content library. And then it's got to be pushed up into that new web interface, synced into some storage, and then replicated to all the content library points. Once you've published that and you have a subscription or access to content library, it'll list all of the OVF, OVA templates and you right click and deploy from templates. You basically run through about the same wizard that if you're deploying from, from an actual template like we did in lab 16. And we don't have time to do lab 17, but they do have this lab where you create a content library. We'll have to create a unique name for a content library. Then you take one of your virtual machines and you clone it. That'll take some time because it's got to make a copy of it into a new OVF, OVA format. And then it wants you to deploy a third running virtual machine from a content library. So it looks like that's going to be a Tuesday thing. So this is almost very similar to what we did in, in 16, but it's the back end stuff and the, the ability of more people to quickly find stuff, the way it's listed is, is different with content library. And it seems like more of a bigger purpose of this is you're going to have developers develop a website on top of this is how I envision it to really be deployed out. So when you do go to AWS and say, I want a Windows 2019 server that's configured with Exchange Server and this amount of RAM and hard disk space and click apply, that they're actually in the back end pulling that out of a content library and then running. They're using the, uh, the hardware specs that you, uh, that you typed out in the, the form and they're feeding that into the into a customization spec from the content library and and allowing it to uh, to push out the way that you need it to be be ran for your business. So we will need to remember lab seventeen. We can get that done at least the first half of Tuesday. Uh, and then we'll
modify virtual machines. We might be able to get through content library lab, the third lesson. And then maybe on Tuesday, we'll look at creating a distributed switching. I guess first off, we're going to have to combine into a super group, get rid of some vCenter servers, then create a distributed switch and make production port group across the distributed switch. There'll be some cool stuff because towards the end of this this lesson you'll need you'll start migrating virtual machines from one host to another so that's not possible when you only have one host so if sean wants to move his over to esx1 we'll have to add esx1 into there so all of our even numbered virtual vCenter servers are probably going to go away and be deleted, leaving us with only the odd numbered vCenter servers. And the odd numbered vCenter servers will be running both ESXi hosts, allows us to do the enterprise features of load balancing and migrating between the two hosts. And when we get to that, we'll have four people logging into the vCenter server. So I'm going to go over on, on my side and bump the RAM up and all the odd number ones, give them like an extra four gig of RAM each. That should make them run better and faster. So that's kind of our plan for Tuesday. I don't know if we can get all of that done Tuesday. We'll see. I think the next test is probably gonna be delayed from whenever, whatever time it says we gotta do the next test because this chapter has got a lot of stuff in it we got to go through all of it before we can plan for our next test. So I doubt we're going to have a test next week. If I don't see it possible the following week, though, so whatever it says in the, the curriculum, I'm figuring that our test is going to be the 16th or 17th before spring break, but I don't see us being able to get to it next week. Maybe we can review for it on Thursday and do it on the 16th. But this is uh, probably one of the biggest chapters. Any questions? Um, I kind of have one. OK. Um, when creating the, uh, uh, the the um, templates. Yes. I accidentally didn't put thin provisioning on one of them. Is that gonna affect it? Uh, it won't hurt anything too bad. Okay. I'll just use a little bit more space, but the the sizes aren't that big. It won't hurt anything. Okay. So that's the end of the YouTube video.